Uh, one second, I will be with you. Uh, welcome, Dr. Abdelati. So, uh, Dr. Abdelati is um, a senior consultant in gynecology in East uh, Lancashire. Am I pronouncing the name well? Uh, sorry for that if it's wrong. And he is the chair of uh, CRG uh, South uh, Canberra and uh, Lancashire Gynecology Oncology Network uh, and uh, accredited center for uh, advanced endometriosis. And he is the clinical lead of the laparoscopic and robotic uh, gynecology uh, surgery. And he is going to uh, uh, talk to us today about uh, provisionalism in clinical practice. And he will give us a lot of tips and hints. I'm pretty sure about that. Thank you, Dr. Abdullahati, for being here. You're today welcome. With us. And you can start sharing your uh, screen now. Thanks. I do share it now. Can you see it? Yes, we can. Oh, yeah, okay. I can. Yeah. All Thank right. You. Thank you very much, everybody. It was a lovely day. I know I'm in my scrub. I was operating and I'm doing clinic, extra clinic due to the pressure in the NHS nowadays. And it's a, a great pleasure to try to help our new generation and generation to follow to join our team in the United Kingdom to support medical practice abroad and back home as well, because we keep going back home. This is our home, Egypt. Now, uh, I know this is maybe a long day for you. And uh, I always have less participants in the after lunch or dinner. And uh, especially with this boring title with the professionalism and clinical practice. But if you think about it, we are a professional, we are a doctor. Any skill is a profession. But because we are profession to deal with sick people and more public, that's why the microscope on us. And we need to be very careful about what we do in our life at work and at home. And even in the public area, when you go shopping and do anything, the public look at you as an icon, as a special thing. Oh, you're the doctor. You're the doctor. You're not allowed to make any mistake. But we are a human being, and we do make mistakes. Then it's very difficult to define pro professionalism. Okay, But if you think about it, how you be profession or how you look to the other people that you are appearing and practice to be a very professional in what you do. Then to be professional, there are certain things you have to adhere to. And to be adherent to something, then you have to put those something to be adherent to, which is regulation, protocol, guidance. How do you look? How do you look in the hospital? How do you look in the street? How do you look in the shopping? How do you look even in the pub? when you're dancing and singing and enjoying all of this is a part of your appearance and professional appearance your behavior and your attitude everywhere it's not just at work because in the uk they are very honest people then they talk about anything there is no secret and there is no lie although as a human being we all lie but the amount of people lie in the UK far less than other places in the world because why do you lie okay everybody know everything now the CCT camera everywhere whatever you do it's going to be picked up then your professionalism has to be developed and changed every time and every day and every year every 10 years according to what you do and how to what you expose to it's very important also to see other people, what they are doing, and try to pick the good things and leave the bad things. And that's very important to put in your head when you come to the UK. Take the good things from everybody and leave the bad things from everybody. <laughs> because we are a human being. And you keep develop. And when I say develop, you develop in your behavior, your personal, your approach, your attitude, your appearance, and your knowledge. because we are in a profession which you need to keep studying and we will learn every day i keep saying that even when you die 
people will learn how to go to their tombs, then learning is a continuous process. The General Medical Council, they put a, a, a land, a, an idea about how you to do professional in your professionalism. And that's include the good medical practice. And to follow the me good medical practice, it's a part of it, your behavior. And how to make the care of the patient is the first things. We are a human being. We can go to work and you have a fight at home for any reason or a fight in the way to work. You have a car accident or flat tire or anything which is affect your mood. But how you control this, not to reflect it in front of your patient and make him feel that you're here just for them. To continue with a good medical practice, you need to be updated by everything. And in every specialty, you can't know everything. People think that they know everything, but they don't know everything. Then you have to keep learning and update your skill every day. If you have any problem with the patient, take a prompt action and always ask the people around you because even the youngest or the oldest, the experienced and non-experienced, you can learn from. And then you have to keep the relationship between the patient and yourself in a trustful. That's part of the profession. And part of it is the honesty. And I will come to this later on. That, again, we don't know anything, everything. And if you don't know something, you should say, I don't know. Where you get the, the source to read or to understand or to improve your, your status in your profession. Part of it is your education and your training. When you come to work and you're in training post and every day you see a patient, you see your colleague, you learn every day from the job. And, you, and nowadays with the media, you're the new generation far better than us in the media and social media. And not everything you read in the media is correct. And you will face this with a lot of patients. Patients come to you with Google, their symptoms, and they know a lot about the symptom, but the Google is not the right place to have a medical treatment. Then how you convince the patient by the, your knowledge and your skill and your experience in this problem is even overcome the knowledge which they read in the Google or in the internet. And that's part of be how to be profession in your giving the knowledge and convincing the patient about their symptoms, their plan of management, and how the relationship between you and the patient. Now, the world role models, uh, it's, it's very common to have this word in the UK and actually, it did happen to me once when I was still as SHO in the UK, somebody asked me who your role model, and I didn't understand what that means. What's a role model? It's a role model is a person around you who you feel like he presents your profession very well, and you want to take them as a leader or a mentor to take them. Then look at those people and spot in them at any job you have to learn from them. And there is specific things for this personality or the person who will be a role model that can help you to improve your skill and your professionalism. Example of the source of professionalism, I think that's for you guys to know where you can get those personal experience around timekeeping, 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 timekeeping. If you come to work late once, that's acceptable. If you come twice with the excuse, that's still acceptable. But if you come to work or your clinic or theater late many times, that's not acceptable. And that's important. Time is time. You look, my, my lecture was supposed to start at 14.45. I open my camera at 14.44. Timing is good practice. And you look at the other people, how they present in their profession how they talk to the patient, how they talk to their colleagues, how they are part of the team. That's part of the pro professional that you will be appearing to the team and your patient. Again, the role model, again, I'm repeating this because it's very important to have 
in your job and especially when you start to have a job in the UK, try to pick the person who you will feel comfortable to talk to and learn from them as a mentor. Your appearance. There is no rule how the appearance will affect your practice. You could be a very good professor, a very skilled surgeon, very skilled doctor, but your appearance in front of the patient and outside is very important. Doesn't mean what's the expensive or senior clothes you're wearing. It doesn't mean this. We come to work with the bicycles and we wearing a helmet of the bicycles and we wearing the suit for the bicycles. And when we park our bicycle in the hospital, we go to the changing room and then change to look clean and handsome and appear to the patient as a profession. I'm in the clinic and I am in the scrub because I was in theater in the morning. That doesn't mean that I don't, I'm not appearing in the, uh, in the not right position. No, in the contrary, you appear as, as a profession in your profession. Um, uniform, we're out of the coats and the suit now because the risk of infection. And uh, although across the Atlantic in the United States, they're still wearing the coats, but they have the facility of changing the coat every day, which will be washed and ironed by the laundry of the hospital. We used to have this back in the 80s and the 90s when we came here. As soon as you joined any hospital, you go and have your white coat and then you will wear it. And if you want to wash it in the laundry of the hospital, you drop it in the laundry and come in. It's iron, solifant, everything is clean. But this is not the case now. Then you don't have to wear a tie, but you can wear whatever you want as long as you follow the infection rule. If you wear a tie and you want to examine a patient, you have to tuck it inside, then it doesn't dangle and touch everything. The white coat is not mandatory now, but if you'd like to wear a white coat, it's up to you. But when you come to the clinical area, you should roll all over this to be above your elbow. And that's for the risk of infection. Having said that, a lot of British people even come to work with jeans. It doesn't matter, but as long as it's clean and representable, and it does present you in front of your patient. When you are very senior like this, maybe it doesn't matter because you maybe know a lot of patients, then they know you. But when I talk to my new consult, uh, new colleagues consultant, for example, who wearing a suit, I was talking to one of them recently. I said to him, John, why are you wearing a suit? He said to me, I'm still junior. I have to convince the patient that I'm, I'm a doctor. For you, you're a senior. You don't have to convince him. Then it doesn't matter. Which he has a point. I used to wear very tie and things like that, but follow the infection rule. Okay. But now, maybe because I am around for a long time, coming close to the retirement, then it's not. But I appear handsome, clean, and to convince the patient I am up to the job to do. If you are a profession, then you will do a good clinical care. Your behavior, your attitude, uh, attitude and your knowledge. Remember that medicine is not just knowledge. It's how to knowledge, you have the knowledge, and then how to apply the knowledge, how you convince the patient that you have the right knowledge, because the media, again, distort the, 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 the information around the internet. And it's very important to have the skill and up to date. Always put the patient interest first. If you're tired, come into work. You don't have to show this to the patient. You, the patient has to think that you are here 24 seven for them. That's mean, but you have to control this because you don't have just one patient. You have loads of patients. Then by cleverness of managing your time and care, give the patient care, is very important. I remember when I had the interview for this job, the chairman in the interview asked me, "What do you exp uh, am I a, 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 a patient for you? What do you think what I expect from you when I come and find your name on the, in the door? And it's very important to tell the patient. I, my answer was, I need to let the patient one believe in me, that I can deliver the care for them, 
and the patient is the most important things in front of me and the patient is my priority pushing the patient first and i'm here for them as long as they want but i have to control the time to see the other patients that's part of the professionalism this is a really good statement there is no shame in actual admitting at time that you don't know everything but you will go and look something up or you will consult with another colleague and then by the next time they come in for a consultation you will have an answer for them i'm a gynecologist and i do a lot of surgery and now we don't write that much prescription for people nowadays and to write a prescription, a lot, many times I don't know the dose. And maybe the junior doctor who do the round of the world know the, the, the dose better than me. And I don't hesitate to call the, the junior to ask me, to, to ask them what's the right dose. And I write it. And that's in front of the patient. And that does not change my image in front of the patient. When I was in registrar in Birmingham, with one of the extremely professor, senior professor in Birmingham, he came to my room and asked me, Muhammad, can you come to help me with this patient? And I felt, how am I going to help the professor in, in managing a patient? And he introduced me to the patient, and he told her, Muhammad Ati, he will help me in doing your surgery. He done it more than me, and that's why I will let him do the surgery for you, and I will join him to learn. To learn, he's a professor, and I was just a registrar. Because I've done this procedure more than him, he said this in front of the patient. It's very important to, ex to be honest with the patient, and that will make the patient believe in your decision and your future treatment. How to express yourself to the patient. People value and underpin everything they do as a profession. Professionalism has come from before, even enter the profession. When we grow up, when we were in school, when we apply to go to the medical school, we start to think about the profession, uh, our profession. And from this point, we start to be professional. You, you know, when you apply in the, after the Sanoya Amma and apply for, for the medical school, you go around and say, oh, I'm applying, for, I get the high grade to apply for the medical school. That's a part of you preparing yourself to be a profession. It's not about the job you're doing, anything like that. It's about what this, this sent behavior and uh, to another person. Then what I mean by this, that always thinks what's the patient in front of you think about you, how much they take and how much they don't want to take what you're saying and how to come down to them to let them understand. The patient understanding is is vary between very skilled and very intelligent patient to a very normal patient. How to come close to those people and let them understand, even if the extreme intelligent people, sometimes it's very difficult to cross the knowledge from your plan of management to them. And that's very important to read the person in front of you. Your attitude and behavior. You have to show everybody, the patient or the team around you or your colleague that you're willing to learn. You're willing to ask the questions. As I mentioned in the comment early in the morning that as the examiner, in the exam, we're not assessing the knowledge of the candidate because the knowledge probably will be assessed in the written part of the MCQ or this part. When we do uh, OSCE or VIVA or personal interview, I just want to assess how this person will deal with things. How will person this will express the knowledge they have? How this person they use the knowledge they have? And if he doesn't have the knowledge, how he will have access to get this knowledge? Your attitude at work. If you're going out shopping in the supermarket, how's your attitude with the people who just running next to you and hit your shoulder and you they didn't even say sorry? And you will face a lot of people like this. What's your reaction to those? It's a part of your profession in the job and in your life. Again, which I mentioned more than once, outside 
a lot of doctors they go out party especially the british people they drink a lot in the party and they enjoy it but there is certain limit there is a line where they don't cross it when i say they don't cross it if they do the normal things when people have uh, enjoying and socializing that's fine but it, you, i haven't seen a doctor to have a fight with uh, the waiter a fight with something you have the right if there is a problem to ask how you ask how to reach to your what do you want to get what do you want with the right way social media social media social media don't ever put anything in the social media before you think because when you work this trust or hospital or this organization will monitor you on the social media and if you write something not appropriate they will get you i've seen a lot of young colleagues who coming up from abroad and they put oh god this hospital i uh, the hospital which i'm working for i think the hospital back home was better maybe it was but don't put this in the social media they will get you and they will ask you and you will put yourself in trouble and if you start to take this road you will face a lot of problem a lot of problem get yourself out of this communication english 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 it doesn't matter what your accents the, the the accent in the uk change every 10 miles i'm working in the two hospital one in burnley and one in blackburn and probably you know from the football there are two big football team burnley and blackburn and it's about 10 miles apart and they have two different accents and two different dialogue and they hate each other of course from the football but accent doesn't put you in a week as long as you can express yourself properly uh, uh, properly and speak a good english and it's very important that you understand english the british people again they use a big words which is the american they don't use the american is easier word wise but maybe to pick it by ear is difficult than the english because we are in in school in egypt we learn english from at the base of the british rather than the american uh, when you write what you communicate a human being i can talk about 10 minutes for something i wrote for three four five pages then you have to know when you communicate and when you write the writing is a document in the notes of the patient or if you're writing email or you're replying anything and my big advice if you have email or letter and requested you to answer do not reply immediately wait think get the shock of the bad news or a good news in the letter or the em uh, or the email and absorb it and calm down do not reply straight away because your way of replying will change if you reply quickly you will make a mistake if you think write it down and review it before you submit it okay it's need to be polite in the way you express yourself in writing and it's appropriate and you respect the other people it depends about even if it's a housekeeper or even if a professor now using the medical term it's very important and we learn this it's good that we learn medicine by english and even if other people learn medicine by other language and coming to the uk they have to convert and understand medical term and we have to send the letter to the patient you don't have to write to the patient very complicated medical word because you're not going to understand it then how to learn to simplify medical word to a normal person in the street to understand you can take pictures of anything to help explain things to the patient and to anybody you're writing to now treating people equally now the the british people are very happy with their nhs nhs is something very valuable because anybody 
who need the medical care at any point can be treat, should be treated equally and have the access. And this is very proudly as uh, the British people think about their NHS. Then there is no difference between a uh, cleaner, uh, auxiliary. I'll give you an example. When the first three months for me in this country, I was working in the hospital just two floor. And they called me at two o'clock in the morning to go to the delivery suite because I, I was obstetrician back then. And then I felt, oh, I'm very tired. I'm not going to take the step for the next floor. I'll get the left. And there was auxiliary having empty wheelchair and she pushed the button for the lift to come in and of course i want the lift to come quickly i pushed the other button for the other uh, lift to come down quickly and she looked at me she told me this is waste of electricity if you wait a minute this lift is coming down and i felt really ashamed of myself and put down i learned from this lady and i keep repeating this instance to everybody because Regardless who she is, regardless how she high or ranking or low ranking, she can teach you something and I should treat her as equally as everybody. And this is actually, it's against the law in England if you try to treat people differently. We are a human being. We have our bias. We all have a bias. But you have to think e with the patient, with the people, with the, any anywhere in the UK, that people are equal regardless. Now, it's very, I added this point actually because still in the British society, when you do something good for a patient, they can bring for you a gift and present chocolate or anything, sometimes more valuable things. And it's very important that you know that there are rule governed things like patient giving you gifts, but how you know how you deal with that. There is certain limit of things which you can take personally. You have to declare it. We have appraisal every year. We have to declare it. And if you have a box of chocolate for you, I prefer to use it with everybody with me, for example, in theater or in the clinic, then I distribute the value of this gift, even if it's a small chocolate to everybody, then it doesn't come back to me. But if you have a certain, every trust or every hospital has a certain limit where you have to declare what gift did you have and don't take it just home and feel happy. Yeah, it's a happy occasion when you get a gift, but you have to understand the rule and the protocol of each hospital. Now, the code of conduct, there are a number of sets of regulation, standard protocol, code of conduct and ethics and trust policy provided parameter for safe and ethical practice. What does that mean? It's a long statement, but that's mean when you go to any hospital, you have to take a very, very low profile. Keep asking everybody, even the, the housekeeping, how to do things. Then at least you feel comfortable and you have to read the guidelines and protocol. We don't, as a senior now, we don't read all the guidelines or ch keep changing because we gone through this and we do the guidelines nowadays. But for you to start your work, you have to follow the term and condition of each hospital because this country doesn't have um, a distour, for example. It doesn't have this because they've never been in conflict and war. That's why anything in the UK had the door open. They open the door if they want you to let you in, and you close it if they don't want you to let you in. Then read what's the policy and the guide of each hospital anywhere you work. Even when you go shopping, what is your right and what's your not right and to follow. The message which I want you to take home that professionalism is not perceived as an absolute, but constructed in the interaction and individual and context. Identification of unprofessional behavior in the workplace may therefore be interfered to be subject to the same judgment. It's very difficult, but take it and think about it. And I, as a, I already confuse you guys, I'm sorry for a very hefty presentation and I'm happy to take any question with the question session. Thank you.
I hope I've been in time. Yes, I'm exactly in time. Thank you very much. That is one of professionalism. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Ati, for this uh, outstanding um, 